So when we're completing the square, what we did completing the square, if you guys remember, was only to rewrite things in vertex form. That was the only reason why we learned how to complete the square. Right in vertex form, you can easily find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. However, we can also solve by completing the square. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of today is to show you when you would want to complete the square, when you would not want to. Is this a fairly basic and easy way to do it? Yes, right? So you wouldn't want to use completing the square. However, I'm going to show you this method so you guys can see, uh, remember the process, because we're going to get into problems where you're going to, where completing the square would be preferable because you couldn't factor. So if you guys remember, the basic steps were the first step was to group the first and the last term, or the, the two middle terms, the x squared and the 6x. That was step number one. Step number two was to factor out anything in front of your a. Make sure a is 1. In this case, my a is 1, so I can move on to step 2. Step 2 was to take b divided by 2 and square it. Well, remember, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So b, in this case, is the number that's in front of my x, our coefficient. So b, in this case, is a 6. 6 divided by 2 squared. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Then what we do is we take that 9 add it inside the parentheses, and then subtract it outside the parentheses. So we have 0 equals um, x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 7 minus 9. Does everybody see that? Okay. There's a couple other ways we could do this. We could always put the 7 on the other side and add the 9 on both sides. But as far as the operations, it's exactly the same way. You guys might have um, had somebody else teach you just add on both sides. Adding and subtracting on the same side is the same thing as adding on both sides. Then what we have to do is we have to factor this down. And now that we're kind of used to factoring, we should be able to factor that. However, um, when we were doing this before, I just said, guys, this is a perfect square trinomial, which at that point, we never even talked about perfect square trinomial. So there's no point in me telling you showing you how to factor, because we haven't even taught about it. So I just said, hey, it's always going to be x plus b divided by 2. But hopefully, you guys now, with a little bit of understanding of factoring, realize you can factor this. What two numbers multiply to give you 9 add to give you 6? 3. x plus 3 times x plus 3, right? What was b divided by 2? 3. So our equation, so it's x plus 3 times x plus 3, which is the same thing as x plus 3 squared, and this becomes a negative 16. So this is basically what we learned before, how to take a quadratic in standard form and put it into vertex form. Now what I'm going to show you is, well, how do you solve then? Here we use the zero product property, right? We had a product of two factors. Here we don't have the zero product property. However, how many variables do I have written in this expression? One. There's only one, that 1x, one right? Over here, the reason why I had to use the zero product property because we had an x and we had an x squared. So you had to factor it and use zero product property. But when there's only one x, it doesn't matter if it's x squared or x, when there's only one x, you can use your inverse operations. Just remember solving equations. The opposite of addition is going to be subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is going to be division. So if I was going to solve for x, we need to look at what's happened to x. x is being added by 3, x is being squared, and x is being subtracted by 16. So the first thing we do is we're going to undo subtraction. So we add 16 to both sides. So you have 16 equals x plus 3 squared. By using the reverse order of operations, I need to undo the squaring. So does anybody have any idea how you'd undo squaring something? You have to take the square root, absolutely. So you take the square root. But the thing that we need to remember about taking the square root is whenever you introduce the square root, for instance, if I have x squared equals 4, and I take the square root of both sides, x equals plus, plus or minus 2. You guys agree with me? Because negative 2 squared could be 4, and 2 squared would be 4. So whenever we introduce the square root to solve a problem, we have to make sure we take, we have to make sure we take the plus and the minus. So that's going to be plus or minus 16 equals x plus 3. Then, now, we just need to solve for x. We'll solve we'll subtract to 3. So I have x equals negative 3 plus or minus, um, plus or minus 16. Wait, 
No, sorry. Plus or minus 4, right? Sorry, I forgot to take the square root of that. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to confuse you. Plus or minus 4. So let's do both of them. What's negative 3 plus 4? Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. What's negative 3 minus 4? You owe me $3. You borrow 4 more dollars. Negative 7. Is that the exact same answer I have over here? Yes. Okay. So the process works the same. 